How's it going, everyone? I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. You okay, Maya? What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. Oh, that. A memory of a murder. Do you really think Miss Tretrick's killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Hey! Really a bad time, Larry. Yo! How's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? Uh, uh, I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Uh, sure, Larry. We'll go with that one. Swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes, I do feel faint. Yes, but I highly doubt that's why. Right on! Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Oh my gosh. You are desperate, aren't you? Right, Nick? <laughs> huh? Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two? <laughs> He's just like, oh my gosh. Not gay here. <laughs> I think you could do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy! You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero! Oh, shut up. No. It ain't happening. I should probably go see Edgeworth. Well, first let's talk. What do you have to say? Larry? You really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. No, he would have. But seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. Yeah? But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. I know that! Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... Edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? What do you mean by that? Nick? I don't know. But, what I do know is... I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? That's truth end. Who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me. Right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? Why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Apparently, I'm the only one who remembers what happened back in the day. Back in my day, we had to deal with some suspicious... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hm. Enough with the silent treatment. Nick? Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? Well, when you first met him, you didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me. Miles, 
and Larry. They saved me, and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? I, I still don't get why, why the extensive... Whatever. Hey, hey Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Uh, um... Sorry, I kind of forgot. <sighs> Apparently I am the only one who remembers. Hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final! Alright, 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 alright! It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. You too, do not leave because it's long. It was in third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? You remember, Larry. Spring, end of third grade. A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. Oh yeah! Now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during P.E. class. I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skipped P.E. that day. I was the only one not in class. So they thought you did it? Yep. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day we held a classroom trial, with me as the defendant. I didn't do it. Guilty. He's guilty. Guilty. Oh my gosh. Give the money back. You're such a me. Oh my. Shut up. You guys. Do any of you have any proof? Oh my gosh. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end. Even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I... I, I didn't know what was happening. I was so mad... Well, I'd be mad. <laughs> I was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. They're almost staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. So Phoenix is 24 right now, right? If that's the case, then when he was a kid, technically, because this takes place in 2016, uh, third grade, most of the time that's what? You're about 10 years old. So, he was in third grade in 2002. Lie detectors existed there. If I was in this position, I'd demand a lie detector <laughs> to prove that I didn't do it. That's what, that's when it happened. Objection! He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. M Miles? By the voice, you could tell I knew it was Miles. <laughs> it wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. 
wow. So formal. <laughs> but, but, Miles, it was your money that was stolen. At least he's fair about it. <laughs> oh, sh Take these, you assholes. Why don't you all just shut up? Oh, wait. <laughs> well, you're a kid. This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. He's just a kid after all, geez. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. No one does, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. Yeah, I know you did. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone. Without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah. Well... I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. Uh, wait. Hold on a sec. Where is your logic behind that? <laughs> Didn't they think I did it because I was not there? How is that little... How do you gain the reasoning from that? Sorry if I blow the mic, by the way. So I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Probably was the butts. Anyway, I sure that I talked about the, the class trial. That's when I... Oh, anyway. I sure that I talked about... Ta 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 talked about the class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. Hm. Well... I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then, a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. DL6 incident. Yep. Yeah. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edra's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence. Manipulating testimonies. Covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him, I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he becomes who he became. That's when I decided. Wait! You don't mean... Yep. That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew I... I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. 
I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick! S so, is that why you helped me out for the free? Uh, yeah. Sure. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh well. Oh, Nick! Nick! Oh boy. Nick! We have to save Mr. Edgeworth! If it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. <laughs> First, there's the rental boat shop caretaker. You need to find out who he or who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I'm pretty sure the what is a human. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence. I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Glad I stuck around and spoke. Let's... It's alright, Gord Lake. Hey, Gumshoe. Hey, pal. Long time no she. You literally saw me yesterday. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. How are you wearing it? Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by, tri by trial time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch a criminal. Okay, bye. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. Well, hi! <laughs> Yay! No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lada was camping. Why would anybody want to go over there anyway? There's no more real evidence to do to find over there. The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go for a while. Okay. I guess Lada in Lada's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Alright, so no woods. That's fine. That wasn't the goal anyway. Huh? The steel... The steel eyesore <laughs> is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about my Mr. Edgeworth. I was about to say Miles, but I guess that would have worked. To show up for work. Yeah, true. <sighs> the old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. I did. I only did because I played the game before. Hold on. I'm actually going to see if I can... Uh, I'll figure it out later. Okay. I don't know what voice to use because I don't know who this is. I know that clearing of the throat anywhere. Well, I don't. Oh. Oh. I don't remember what voice I've given you. Um, um hello. Wow, that's probably not it, but whatever. <laughs> uh, what might you be doing here? Out for a walk. Mm -hmm. Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see? Why fresh lemon? Why? I don't get you, Grossberg. 
Eh. That looks a bit more natural. This thing is like way too big. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Grosner, this is no time for idle reminiscing. This treasure's trial ends tomorrow. <laughs> that is true, yes. But from what I saw, today's trial, Edward should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, oh. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. Is that really all you came here to tell me? What do you think Mr. Crossberg was doing here anyway? I don't know. Who knows? Alright, well time to move to the boat rental shop. See if we can get something out of that thing now. We know the password. We know he's the criminal, so we know probably something bad's in there. Something that might help us. Nobody's home. Hello? Hello? Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello? Hello? I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parent to fend for herself. Hello? Hello? That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aww. But hey. He keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick. Let's see what's in there. <laughs> you ain't given a choice, Nick. It's happening anyway. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. Or, that was Phoenix. Oops. A letter? Oh, boring. Hmm. There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Wait, what? Edgeworth? Nick, why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? I... This just kind of proves the whole statement that I... S ah! I'm trying to pick this up so I can use one hand for this instead of two. Okay. Free hand. <laughs> How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. What? The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edward. Calling Edward out to the lake. Getting on the boat. Firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. Decisive evidence. Can we just end it here and go to trial tomorrow? Just show this to the court and say, okay, here's my decisive evidence, we're done, let's go home. <laughs> what do you think it means, Nick? It means all right. I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for the caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written this letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? I know I look smart, but I'm not that smart. <laughs> but one thing's for certain, actually I can't say that because I... 
Through deductive reasoning, I figured this out. Without the letter. <laughs> One thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Yeah, let's not lose it. Oops, I did not mean to do that. I forget when you press minus on the Switch controller, it does that. I completely forgot about that. All right, let's move to, uh, let's go to Grossberg's, Grossberg's place. What am I doing? I'm gonna go over to Grossberg, see what he has to say. Hey, Miles. You okay? You look as grim as always. Wow, Phoenix. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? Eh. You don't remember? No, I don't. Well, I mean, if he can't remember the DL6, how the hell is he supposed to remember the class trial? If you guys haven't seen the last episodes or you haven't played the game, uh, Edgeworth can hardly remember the DL6 incident at all. So, <laughs> I don't expect him to remember a class trial that happened before that. This way, for you guys. This way, for me. <laughs> Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money? Oh! Oh, right! Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Probably because it meant the most to him. Yeah. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the thing kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, Rice? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor, anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. Well, it's not exactly defending criminals. In the end, isn't it just finding out the truth and you're if you find out you're defending the criminal, they're gonna be found guilty anyway. One suspect was apprehended in your father's mar your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator was my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter any way to look at it. Any way you look at it. I think I said two. Oops. Yet he was found innocent. The defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago. The three of us were trapped in the elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now I can't recall what happened in that elevator. Why do you claim... That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. I mean... It's not exactly inaccurate. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent.
That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher, and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. Okay. Meh. There, that looks a lot better. Ow, that actually kind of hurt. <laughs> so he's like my sister was to you, Nick. That's actually not a bad uh, comparison. Except, I doubt... <sighs> I'm not gonna say what I'm thinking yet. I almost... I almost said something that would have given away the entire game at, for those who haven't played it yet. But, yeah. That looks totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's a perfect. I know how to read. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life. He is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Wow. Well, that's not... But, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that even in, that in every case. I can't read right now. All Von Karma does is his job. To find the suspect guilty, perfectly. In any case, it's not well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! It's a strange situation in which I find myself. I'll admit. No kidding. Can I present anything? Wait, what about the letter? What happens if I present the letter to? I don't think I can present anything else that'll make much of a difference, but what if I present this? Edward, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge? On me? Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an, Could he be an innocent defendant you get declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. Okay, so you're one of the people who remembers pretty much everyone you declared guilty. Dang. That's some pretty good memory you got. I guess I can understand how you would forget the DL6 and everything before it, though, with that... You know... What actually happened in there. So he was following this letter, then? Not to mention it happened 14 years prior to this, so... Well, 15 years, sorry. 15. Okay, so he was nine then. Still, I wasn't far off, still. Anyway. So he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now it's time to give revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond. Myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. Who is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? I guess all evidence does point in that direction. 
Yanni Yogi, Maya. It was just mentioned a few minutes ago. The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in the elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. The help! I can't breathe! Quiet. I said quiet. You're not making it this any easier. I want to get help! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edward. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. I guess now you're not really given a choice, are you? You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A uh, crime you committed? A memory of a murder. I think, I think the time has come to tell all. Oh boy. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a beautiful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing, in the dark. Okay, we already read this. Okay, we already read those. I, I can't breathe. You're, you're using up my air. What? That doesn't even make sense. Stop breathing my air. I'll, I'll stop you. Uh, what, what are you doing? What are you? Stop breathing my air! No! Father! He's attacking father. Then I see the pistol lying up by my feet. I don't know if I was, if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick it, I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Well... And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream! A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. Oh my god. It's a long time to just have a scream go through your mind. But, but it's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? 
What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why you wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth. You, you mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. I have a hard time believing that. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do, like it or not. There's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident. Maybe... There is, Nick. There's someone else who knows about DL6. Okay, so now we go to Grossberg, I'm assuming. M Mr. Grossberg. Ah, oh, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding! Can't believe you're not! <laughs> Just calm down and tell me what's happened, hmm? It's Mr. It's Mr. Edgeworth. He. he. I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father? He's been dreaming that for 15 years now, apparently. I wonder. Oh, come on, dude. What? If that's the case, then why don't you do look so, why do you do look so troubled, hmm? Well Also consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edwards. Yeah? We already know this. So, so deep he wanted to frame him for murder. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Leads me to surmise. And Mr. Edgeworth's, but Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. Oh, crap. Well, whatever that said. Well, Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. And technically, he didn't. That doesn't make sense, though. It's not one of those kind of guns where it just hits the ground and it'll shoot. It wasn't one of those kind of guns. That's not how those. That's not how a pistol works. I only know this because my family has, like, my mom's side of the family has, like, six or seven officers. A few of them actually used to use these kind of guns, like pistols, stuff like that. I don't think they're, I don't think that's not how a pistol works. Not as far as I, I'm, I know. It just, it just doesn't work like that. If he threw it, there's no way it could have been shot. Then again, there was a bang and then a scream, so I guess in the game that's how it works, but... Someone must have pulled the trigger, or something. Or did he pull it and throw it somehow at lightning speed? I don't know. I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder, and his car career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edwards. This is his last chance, of course. The subject of limitation so close. Gregory Edwards, what do you know about Edwards' father? He was a defense attorney with Alpia. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one Pia. Now that I think about it, you meant to me a fay? My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. I'm pretty sure anybody would be. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result? He has a perfect win record in court. He should be arrested for that. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call a 
attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth. Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony. That Edra's dad lied to protect his son. It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. So it seems like it's not necessary to show you this, but... Hold on. Date 1228 2001. 35 defense attorney trapped in the elevator return of 11 miles after 189. Wait. The murder weapon was fired twice? There were two bullets fired. And yet only one was found? Isn't that a little weird? This incident took place 15 years ago, so tomorrow we'll see the completion of not one, but two trials. All thanks to the statute of limitations. However, I'm afraid the damage of DL6 incident has done will never be eased. Move to criminal affairs, see if I can do anything over there. Hello? Hmm. Looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe will be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. Boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Can I still move to the. Nope. Okay, so where do we go next? Is there anything I can actually... Okay, she was a beautiful woman, apparently. Ah! I'm really sorry about what I did. Well, huh? sorry about what? I think I'll stay out of this one. Gregory Fifth, he was a gifted man. He, his death was truly a loss. I wonder what would have become of Carlo were he alive. Probably be arrested or something. I don't know. And now I am at a loss. To explore everything, I guess. Expensive looking mahogany bookshelves. Filled with expensive looking books. Hmm. Funny. They don't look like they ever been read. Saw a mahogany desk, wood's been polished. Whoops, I did not mean to read that again. Guess Mr. Grosswick isn't getting that painting back. Ain't kinda bad for him. Table for clients. Hmm. An, el an elegant ebony case, and if I'm not mistaken, that lighter is made of solid gold. 
Even I can tell someone here has got money to burn. An expensive potted plant. No idea what kind of plant it is. Uh, it's probably the most expensive one available. I could present literally everything here, but what would the point of that be? Uh, quite sorry. I have nothing to consider. Okay. Ah, ball sacks. Okay. Let's try this again. In any case, it's good that the one shooting isn't Miles. You bet it's good. I can't believe the fiendish planning that went into this murder. We almost fell right into its trap. What a creep. Kind of figured that one. Okay. Okay. This incident took place 15 years ago. So we'll see the completion of no Okay, I have read this. Give me a choice. He was a gifted man. His death was truly a loss. I cannot pinpoint one specific voice for you, dude. Wonder what would have become of Von Karma were he alive. Okay, I have read that. Oh, so this is the letter? It does seem that Yogi was following this letter. He killed Hammond. Why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. But he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? Okay. I think we're getting somewhere. He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he caught his client found innocent, so why should that matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won the incident, or he won the innocent for, for no one but himself. No, he was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Ah, great. Do you have any idea who wrote this? I actually do. Might as well say it. Manfred von Karma. Hmm. Could it have been Manfred von Karma? Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma, Von Karma. Wait, wait! You're up, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. See? I used to see it all the time in court reports. What? But, but that means... The, the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. And for Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Ah, 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 ah. It's truly... It's truly... If it was truly Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. Then he, yeah, kind of, kind of makes sense. You would know that Edgeworth accidentally killed his own father. Say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. You'll press the point to the court, fuck. Till the, oh my god. You'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth, guil Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But how could have Von Karma known about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court. And... Von Karma did win. 
but yet didn't make it through the trial on Scar. What happened in the trial between Idris Dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial, but Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. No, he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth accused. Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It's the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! Must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von is going to bring up DL6, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Uh, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that. I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But what, Nick? Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him or from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. Can't promise anything. In fact, I think he... I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Police materials, hmm? Okay. No, I don't want to do that! So, criminal affairs now? Yep. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy. Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think I'm sure he'll be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Uh, we were wondering if we could go, if we could check out the records room again. Well, no. I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But, I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now, anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Ah, oh, great. Yes, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry. Oh, boy. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Long karma. Why is the drawer open? Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved cases evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases? Nick! The file for DL6, it's completely empty. Well, we have part of it. What? What are you doing here? Hi! Hey! V -v -v -von Karma! You. Yeah? And? How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What do you say? We see each other every day, don't we? 
No, it's not just defense team. Defense team. Ah, I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. I need those things to be crushed. Oh, fuck you, dude. I can see how this guy was Edward's mentor. Uh, um, Mr. Edward is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed the veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. <laughs> so you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Fair. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. You're right. So Von Karma is going to bring up DL6 in court tomorrow. Ah, oh, crap, I didn't mean to do that. <sighs> what am I supposed to do now? Uh... I'm assuming I have to present something. It'll have to, it'll probably be something involving DL6 now that we've pretty much gone down that path. I don't. We know he, sh he wrote this. I don't think I want to show him the letter. Screw that, I don't want to show you the letter. Fool. Do you think I, as a prosecutor, would give you a defense attorney information? Bah. Okay, so that's what he says if he doesn't have anything to say. Okay. Nope. Well, the only other thing I could think of showing him would be this. Isn't that a bad idea? Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. S so you admit it. You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You saved me from a lot of needless hassle. W what? Nick, where's that thing? What the f- A stun gun! For self-defense. Usually. Indeed. 600 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. So, I think I said 600. 600,000. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die for me, usually. Actually, you'd have to do it so repetitively to the point where they would, but you're just doing it once. No, they wouldn't. Now, give me the letter. No! No! Whoa, what are you... Nick, run! Ah! Maya! Boy. Out of my way. Okay. Ah, uh, he got us. 
Well, there's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 DL6 evidence. All of it! Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya. Is she okay? Ma Maya! Maya, open your eyes! Maya! The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. A are you okay? I, I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could. But one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. You're a pretty brave girl to be able to do that. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my own sister. Not even now. When we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya! Ugh. There has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Huh? Maya, she's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incident, evidence number seven. Taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. DL6 bullet stashed in a pocket. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useful. Or useless. Fuck! Forget I said that. She is definitely useful. <laughs> You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Alright. Sure, that took a while to investigate, but hey. We're going to our last day of court for this particular trial. And after that, we've got one more left. You know, if I decide to do it. <laughs> Since it's originally not exactly part of the main story. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this video here. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, push that like button and so far you can't see anymore. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. If you got any suggestions for me for any other visual novels you'd like me to do, just let me know in the comments below. Or if you want to check uh, any of the other visual novels that I've done in the past, click the box down over there. If you want to check out the rest of the playlist for this game, click the box across from my head here. In the meantime, I'm out and I'll see you guys later. Bye!